All right, almost halfway, 10-3, uh, operations with rational, radical expressions. Okay, so now we're gonna add and subtract, multiply them, divide them, all sorts of stuff. Okay, we're gonna treat these a lot like we do like terms. They have to have the same exact square root with the same exact number underneath, or we can't do anything to them. So it has to be the same radicand. This is called the radicand. Um, otherwise, we got to do something else. Okay. So we have six root eleven plus nine root eleven. So six plus nine is fifteen root eleven. We're just adding how many root elevens we have. Here we have six of them. Here we have nine of them. So we add them together. Okay. Try that one. That's subtraction. Okay. So going back to this one, there's a one here. So we have one root three minus five root three. So we're talking about how many root threes we have. Same thing with these two, give them a try. Not all that complicated. It's just like adding seven. It's like taking seven y minus eight y, except now our y is the square root of two. Okay, now in this case, it looks like we can't do anything. We're done, we move on. Wrong. We can break down from the last chapter. We learned that the square root of 12 is equal to the square root of 4 times 3. The square root of 4 is 2. So we actually have 2 root 3. Well, look at that. We took something that didn't look similar and we made it similar. So we have 3 root 3 as our solution. Just because it doesn't work doesn't mean you can't figure it out. Okay, give those two a try. Sometimes we might have to do both of them and see what happens. Okay, now we're multiplying. This is just distributive. So we're going to take the square root of 10 times the square root of 6 and the square root of 10 times 3. So we get the square root of 60 plus 3 root 10. Okay. Uh, the question is, are we done? Um, let's see, 60 is 15 times 4. Um, Anything else? Yeah, 4 and 15. So we break this down into 4 times 15. This one can't be broken down any further. So we pull a 2 out. 2 root 15 plus 3 root 10. Nothing's the same. We're done. But we do have to go through the process of simplifying it. Right? What is the simplified form? We read the directions because we're smart. Okay. Now, this is FOIL. Okay. So now we're going to go back to what we did in chapter 7 or 8, whatever it is. And we're going to do the first terms, which is the square root of 6 times the square root of 6, so the square root of 36. The outer terms, which is positive the square root of 18. The inner terms, minus 2 root 18. And then the last terms, minus 2 root 9. Okay, follow along with that again. Root 6 times root 6, root 36. Root 6 times positive root 3, positive root 18. Negative, root, negative 2 root 3 times 6, negative 2 root 18. And negative 2 root 3 times positive root 3, negative 2 times root 9. Okay. 36, 6. Combine these together first, negative root 18 and then minus two times three. Root nine is three, so this is actually a six as well. So I'm gonna move that. Six minus six cancels them. So I'm left with negative root 18. Well, this can still be simplified. Okay. This is equal to nine times two. So we get negative three root two. So all of that is represented by that. Okay, go back and watch it again if you need to. Okay, try these. Try these ones. This is the distributive. This one is asking you to foil it. This one's asking you to foil it. See what you get. Okay, conjugates. Basically what we're doing is we're going to rationalize the denominator through this process. So if I have something like the square root of 5 plus the square root of 13, and I want to get rid of it, I can multiply by the conjugate of it. 
basically the opposite symbol. The first and second piece stay the same, the symbol changes. Okay? And what happens is the first values, the outer and the inner cancel, and then we have the last values. So we get 5 minus 13, so we get an answer of negative 8. What the conjugate does is it gets rid of all of the square root symbols, eventually. So how we're going to use this is we're going to use this when trying to simplify the denominator. Okay. I got this. I got trouble. So what I do is I multiply by the conjugate. But it has to be the conjugate over the conjugate. I have to multiply by 1 or otherwise I'm changing it. So I get 10 root 7 plus 10 root 2 all over 49, the square root of 49, these cancel, these cancel, minus the square root of 4. So I get 7 minus 2. So I keep going, 10 root 7 plus 10 root 2 over 5. Notice everything has a 5 in common. All of them, the 10, the 10, and the 5. If this were a 6, we could not simplify them. And we don't care what's inside. So what I get is 2 root 7 plus 2 root 2. That is the simplified version. Okay. Once again, if one of these outside numbers was different, couldn't be factored that way, then we couldn't do it. Give that one a try, multiply by the conjugate, and then we have the lesson check. Yep, yep. All right, see ya.